lecture, we are going to learn about the scanning electron microscopic. SEM is a very useful and highly used uh, technique in material science. And I think a lot of you have already tried. Uh, as this, uh, this lecture, we are going to go through the first two, one and two topic about how the SEM works and how the electron beam interact with the specimen and what about the detection system and how we can change the parameter to get a good image. So uh, theoretically, the SEM can get a very high resolution about one nanometer, but due to the charging effect, we cannot, we can, we cannot get that high resolution and we always use it to, get, uh, to look at the structure about over 50 nanometers. So when we have to get the precise nanostructure of the samples, we always use TEM, which have a higher resolution, about 0.1 nanometer. The SEM has a very highly, uh, have a lot of application in researchers. So it highly used when people try to get the topographic surface details and also the morphology of the, uh, the samples. And you can also get the thickness and subsurface information from cross-section SEM and also the composition of your specimen. So now let's look at the main component component of an SEM. All of the uh, all of those uh, lens and electron guns are put under vacuum because you need the vacuum to have your electron beam go through all of those uh, uh, all of those different parts and you have to have an electron gun to generate the electron beam and then the electron beam will go through two different lenses one is the condenser lens and the other is the objective lens and then the electron beam will keep your sample at the bottom so the electron gun, the purpose of the electron gun is to generate the electron beam, which need to be stable and it can changing it, and it can use to change the uh, ac acceleration of the electrons to get diff, uh, to adjust the energy of the electrons. So this electron from electron gun, we call it primary electrons. And um, this primary electron will go through the condenser lens, which is to demagnify the image of the uh, image of the beam crossover to find out the spot size onto the specimen. And the objective lens is the last lens to focus the electron beam that heat on your specimen. So the the uh, most important part of this lecture is the electron basement interaction and um, because the SEM system is built, is developed based on the interaction between the electron and the nuclear of your specimen. And so there are two different interactions, one is elastic and another is inelastic. So the elastic interaction is the interaction between the nuclear and the primary beam. And um, when the primary electron went through very close to your nuclear, the nuclear will change the kinetic energy of the electron and also shift the shift as movement. So your electron will change the direction of your of the movement, and then the penetration, uh, the penetration depth of the electron in the samples will be changed as well. Um, the probability that an atom will interact with the electron is called uh, cross. Uh, it's, it's called cross section. So this elastic cross section is affect by the atomic number and also the energy of the electrons. So we have an equation of the cross-section. We, uh, we can measure this and um, it will tell you 
how uh, from this equi equi equation we can know that when you have a heavy atom or you have less energy of your electron you will have a higher cross section which means you have more interaction between the atom and your electrons that means you have less penetration depth you can get only the surface of your sample but not go to the depth of your sample so for example when we have silicon as specimen and you have different energy of your electron beam uh, compared to 30 uh, kilo, uh, kilo EV when we have an energy of 5 kilo EV we can get a much less cross section a much higher cross section and that means you have a very shallow penetration depth in this case you have just 200 nanometer of your penetration depth of silicon but when you have a very high energy of electrons you can get 4000 nanometer penetration depth and you will get different information at different layer of your sample instead uh, beside the elect elastic interaction we have the inelastic interaction and in this case the primary beam the primary electron will heat the electron cloud, uh, cloud around your uh, around your nuclear and the atoms. So, when the inelastic interaction happens, it will result in the transfer of energy from the primary electron to the uh, the electron of your atoms. So, in most of the cases, the primary electron will lose part of its energy and it will be transferred to the electron on the on the lowest orbita uh, orbitation level and this electron will get, obtain some more energy and it will be kicked out to the higher orbitation level so this is the inelastic interaction and all of this different interaction will affect the interaction value of your samples. So the energy of your primary electron beam, atomic number, and also the an angle of your in incident primary beam will all affect the interaction value. For example, like in this picture, we, um, this sample is a copper grade coated with a polymer film. So when you have a very low energy of the electron beam, you can get the information about the uh, polymer film, but not from the copper grid. Because when you have a low energy of primary, uh, of primary beam, you can get the higher, uh, you can get a higher interaction with your samples. That means you can only get the surface information. So that's what you have here only for the film. But when you have a very strong uh, energy of the primary beam, you can get the information that panels through the samples, which is the copper below your polymer film. So that is how we change the parameter of the SEM technique to get different information from your samples and the different part you want to look at. So when the signals from the different inter uh, interaction value can also give you different information. From the most top of the interaction value, you can get the secondary electrons because the secondary electron is very, have a very, the lowest energy from all of this. So it can only get through, uh, can get out from a very shallow depth because it can it will lose all of its energy when when the electro select secondary electron is at this level, so it cannot go out of the samples. And backscattering energies are from the second part, and it have a stronger uh, energy. 
so it can penetrate through like one to two microm micron micrometer. And the other part are the X-ray. So from different part of the uh, interaction volume, you can get different information. And those two you can get from SEM, and those two you can get from XPS or XRD, and all the other different techniques. So next, uh, next lecture, we are going to talk about uh, the SEM, about secondary electrons and backscattering electrons, and how you use this different electrons to get your image.